any body which has got mass has its effectiveness of the gravitational force all around in the space anywhere we put a mass it will be attracted the measurement of intensity of effectiveness is measured by two methods one is the gravitational field at this point that we have studied in the previous lecture and that is measured by the force I place a test mass here 1 kg whatever force is being applied that is known as gravitational field at this point now we have another quantity which tells us effectiveness of gravitation at this point at this point at this point and that effectiveness we measured in the terms of work work done here is a mass m it is having gravitational field all around it in that gravitational field i have a small mass here it is being attracted i want to take it from this point to this point point a to point b if i take it from a to b then i have to apply force on it because it is being attracted by this mass so i have to apply equal and opposite force and then keep sliding it up to b there is a displacement so i have applied a force i have done a displacement so i have done certain work if i am doing certain work where does my work where does my energy go the answer is that energy is stored in this particle here to here there are two energy levels of this mass here its energy is u at a here is energy is u at b and how much work i have done work energy theorem says that i have done work ub minus ua now this difference in potential energy the work done this is known as potential difference between point a and b again it changes from point to point like field changes from point to point this potential difference also change point to point for any two points the potential difference will be different so this is potential difference the work we have to do now suppose there is a point here there is a point here d and we allow it to move because there is a force of attraction because of the force of attraction it moves this way i apply my hand here it press my hand and i allow it to press my hand and it keeps on pressing it bring it here it is applying a force it is covering a displacement so it is doing the work now who is doing the work the one who is applying the force now this mass is doing the work here who was doing the work i was doing the work because i was pressing it in this direction now this is pressing me in this direction this is if i put my hand here and allow it it will press my hand back to this position because after all the force is attraction here the force by this is attraction now if this brings me back here it has done some work for that work for that work it must be having capacity to do the work that is it must be having certain energy from where that energy came yes i brought it to this place i gave it energy and that energy it has used to push my hand back that means it is capable of storing the energy if somebody is doing work on it then he has to spend energy that energy will be stored with it will become its potential energy because its position has changed so that will be its potential energy and i have made it this way if i make it this way you understand the thing very well because we have done it repeatedly this is ground 
this is the ball and we put it here. How much is the distance h? How much is the force mgh? And what is the energy difference between the two mgh? The work done. So if here is the potential at ground, here is potential at top, then I will say the difference of potential energy is equal to mgh. This is something we should understand. Here energy is not zero. There is a proof this energy is not zero because if you make, if you dig a well here and now bring it here, it will come down. The energy will further reduce. How energy can reduce if it was not having energy? That means it was having energy. So it really has energy unless, until it reaches center of the earth. Okay. So every part particle has energy and between any two points, if we want to move it in the gravitational field, we have to work on it. Either we have to do the work or it has to do the work. This I will use it this way. If I am doing the work on it, if that is positive work, then if this is doing work on me, that will be negative work. Okay. So that is the difference of energies at two points is known as potential difference. This concept was taken from electrical again. So for potential difference in electricity, we take the potential unit as voltage. So the potential difference is taken as Va minus Vb. This is equal to work done for carrying mass from B to A. Why B to A not A to B? The answer is okay. Final minus initial. This is how we calculate the difference. Final potential, initial potential and this is the difference. So this is potential difference between two points. That is work done on unit mass. Suppose we have mass, we have mass M. The work done from B to A is W, B to A. Then work done on unit mass. How much will be the work done on unit mass from B to A? So this work will be work done B to A divided by mass. That is work done on 1 kg. And this work done on 1 kg carrying it from B to A is known as potential difference between a and B. This. This is our formula and definition of potential difference. So please remember potential difference between point A and B. For mass M, I will make it a definition form. For mass M, the work done from B to A is WBA, then work done on unit mass from B to A is WBA upon M. This is called potential difference between A and B. This is potential difference work done on unit mass. Okay. Now, this is work done from B to A and here it is A to B. This is reverse. If I want to write both A, B, A, B, then this can be written as V A minus V B is equal to, here is M. And this I write B to A. I bring it from A to B and put a minus here. 
because work from B to A and work from A to B, there is a difference of sign. Okay, so this is our formula for work done and potential difference. This is potential difference. Once again, whose property, whose characteristic is the potential difference? The answer, potential difference is the characteristic of two locations. Potential difference between A and B, potential difference between A and C, potential difference between C and D, like that. So potential, with the potential difference, we have to mention between which those two points. And what is compulsory thing? Compulsory thing is that all these points should be in the gravitational field itself. If there is no gravitational field here, then there is no force here and we cannot do the work. There is no potential difference. Everywhere potential difference is not there. It is zero. Okay. Now, once we have this concept of potential difference between two points, we have a very natural question. Can there not be potential of a point? Yes. We can make potential of a point. If this potential difference we have a definition and a formula. B is a location, such a location where potential is zero. Then we have potential of A is equal to work done and this. Okay, now how potential at B can be zero? We make an answer. If, if the location of B is far away, that is at infinity, then how much will be the force or field by this mass? We know it is m upon r square and r is infinity. So that electric, uh, that gravitational field or the gravitational force will be almost zero. So there, where the force is zero, where the field is zero, we assume potential is zero. Because for moving a mass, we don't experience any force. We don't have to do any work. So there, we take the potential as zero. At infinity, potential is zero. There is another place at center of earth potential is zero. Now in this case where is B? B is at infinity. So this we can write as infinity. Now this is potential at A. Now this we can write as See, potential at point A is work done on unit mass for carrying it from infinity to A. Here, we carried it from B to A. That was B to A. That was VA minus VB. And now, we are bringing it from infinity to A because at infinity, this will become 0. This way or this we can write making it plus and this will be infinity to A and this gives us definition of potential at point A. This is our definition at a point. Now according to this definition, we can always find out what should be the expression for potential at a point and that we will do in the next question. So this was our gravitational potential introduction. In the next lecture you will see gravitational potential calculation. Okay, so that we will see in the next. Thank you.